the escalating political crisis in Venezuela, sparking street clashes that have left dozens of people injured and prompted the United States Embassy in Caracas to warn Americans to shelter in place. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is joining us now from the State Department. Mr. Secretary, thanks so much for joining us. You bet, Wolf. Great to be with you, sir. Thank you. Did you know, did the United States government know this uprising was coming? If I don't want to get into uh, precisely what we knew, but we've had good information all along as we've been working uh, with the Venezuelan people and the uh, Juan Guaido and the National Assembly to restore democracy inside of Venezuela. Uh, we've been on that mission for a while. We're still on that mission. Uh, we've watched the events unfold today. We were urging there to be a nonviolent solution. Uh, Maduro simply should leave. It's his time. He has no answers for the Venezuelan people, and the United States is determined to assist the Venezuelan people in restoring democracy and beginning to build back their economy. Did the United States back this push by Juan Guaido or give any assurances to Guaido that the U.S. would support him? Oh, we've made clear assurances we'll fall along that we'd support Juan Guaido and the National Assembly. They're the uh, duly elected leaders of the Venezuelan government. So, yes, we've, we've provided strong assurances to them. I uh, indicated that again this morning as, as the president throughout the day. We've seen the violence on the streets of Caracas and elsewhere. It certainly looks like uh, Maduro is not going to go without a significant fight. So here's the question. What specifically is the United States prepared to do if Maduro arrests Guaido? Well, I'm not going to get into specifics, but we've made very clear we would consider that a, a major escalation. Uh, Wolf, we've, we've watched throughout the day. It's been a long time since anyone has seen Maduro. Uh, he had an airplane on the tarmac. He was ready to leave this morning, as we understand it, and the Russians indicated he should stay. Uh, we, we think the situation remains incredibly fluid. We know that there were senior leaders inside the Maduro government that were prepared to leave. Uh, they told us as much over the past few weeks, and we're convinced that the Venezuelan people are going to get their democracy back. So if you say he was getting ready to head over to the airport and the Russians talked him out of it, are the Russians responsible now for what's going on? We, we've made clear all along, Wolf, that, uh, that Maduro is surrounded by Cubans and has been supported by Russians there in Venezuela. Uh, and we've told the Russians and we've told the Cubans uh, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable to starve people. It's unacceptable to allow sick children not to be able to get their medicine. Uh, the nations of the region, uh, the Lima Group, the Organization of American States are all demanding uh, that we get democracy restored and that we get dignity back to this once great nation. It's a, it's a country that has the capacity for great wealth, and the United States is prepared to stand with the Venezuelan people to support uh, the interim government, to help a free and fair election take place, and then to build back this country. Well, you say you've spoken to the Russians, you've spoken to the Cubans. Uh, clearly, they're not listening because their support for Maduro continues. So, so what are you going to do if that continues down the road and, and looks like this violence is simply going to escalate? Well, uh, we're, we're continuing to work. Uh, one should, one should measure the progress that the Venezuelan people have made. Uh, they're continuing to accrete influence and power, and I'm convinced that will, that will be the case, not only today, but in the days ahead as well. What, what's very concerning is the Russians, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Secretary, they have missiles on the ground in Venezuela right now. That, in effect, could, could restrict U.S. military options if, in fact, there are any U.S. military options. I asked the question... Because you and your, your colleagues that keep saying all options are on the table. Uh, Wolf, the president has made very clear that all options are on the table. That certainly includes a military option. Uh, we're working to make sure that doesn't need to be the case, that we uh, deliver this outcome for the Venezuelan people in a way that doesn't put life and limb at risk and there are, there's not violence. Uh, but I don't think anyone should be fooled that if the president makes that decision, if he chooses a military option, that the United States military has the capacity to execute that option in a way that will achieve the outcome the president intends. How violent does it have to get before the U.S. does unleash a military option? We're working to make sure there's not violence, Wolf. We're working to make sure that we, uh, we stop what it is Maduro is doing, relying on Cuban thugs to protect himself from his own people, from the Venezuelan people. Uh, I, I hear people talk about military intervention. Well, that's happened. Uh, there's Cuban military on the ground. Uh, and they're doing so without the consent of the lawful government in Venezuela. They did it at the behest of Maduro, but without the permission from Juan Guaido and the National Assembly. That's, that's the incursion. That's the invasion. And it's what the Venez Venezuelan people are demanding be overturned. But there's a lot of violence going on right now. We've been showing these, uh, these images, uh, horrible images, 
all day of what's happening on the streets of Caracas and elsewhere in Venezuela right now. It looks like it looks like it's continuing. So uh, once again, how much more violent does it have to get before the U.S. intervenes? Well, if we're not going to talk about exactly where our red lines are and where our triggers are for this, uh, we've been determined, we remain determined, the uh, nations of the region remain determined. Ten percent, ten percent of the Venezuelan people have already had to flee their country. Uh, the United States stands ready, as we do in many places in the world, to support democracy and freedom and I, to protect the rights of the Venezuelan people. We're going to continue to do that. I understand you don't want to discuss military options. Let's talk about diplomatic options right now, political options. What are you doing right now to try to stop the violence from escalating? Well, first of all, we're making clear to everyone that we're watching. We will hold accountable those who turn to uh, violence or inflict violence upon the Venezuelan people. So uh, there will be a day for accountability for all those who engage in this. Uh, and we're encouraging all the parties on the ground uh, to assault, resolve this peacefully. Uh, this is a duly elected leader, an interim leader, Juan Guaido, and it should be a political process for free and fair elections that should lead to the handover of all of the power inside of Venezuela. It's what the State Department is determined to achieve. The average American watching us right now, Mr. Secretary, uh, what does all that mean from the U.S. perspective? Well, Wolf, it means that uh, we have a, uh, a nation that has demanded democracy. It's demanded to have food for starving children and medicine for sick kids. They seem like basic things. I think every American can understand that. And the United States and, and frankly, uh, nearly every country in the region uh, is working to support that. The American taxpayers have been most gracious and put a couple hundred metric tons of food on the Venezuelan border and Maduro deny the ability to get that food into them. Uh, this won't stand. The Venezuelan people won't stand for this. Uh, it may take just a little bit longer to get there, but I'm convinced. I'm convinced that democracy will return to Venezuela, and then all of us, the entire world, the coalition of 54 nations, uh, will stand together to help the Venezuelan people restore their economy as And well. I just want you to elaborate, Mr. Secretary, on what you said earlier, that uh, he was apparently ready to leave, head, head off to the airport, uh, Maduro, but the Russians talked him out of that. Is that right? That's right. So you, blame, so you blame he, Russia he, he, for the violence?